Okay, I want to talk about CSS grids a little bit more. I want to talk about using named grids, but really moving things around on the page. What I've done is I've created a main element with 12 divs. I gave them all the class box just so I could do some basic styling on them. Then I gave them the classes A through L, just a random letter for each one in the text. For each one, I've put their number, just so we can keep track of where they're moving without having to remember which color is which box. Now, my CSS, I've set the main element to display grid. So this is my grid. And I've defined four columns equal size. They're one fraction each. My rows are five REMs, seven REMs, and five REMs tall. And then these are the names. So A, B, C, D, and so on. I can now come in here and I can start adding the names. So grid area A, the first one. So A will be wherever A is inside of here. The fact that it's the same as my class name is not important. That does not matter. I could have called this Fred and then come in here and said, this is Fred. And it works the same way. It's just, this is just a label to look at here to see what are each of the three rows. I've defined three rows. So I've defined three rows in my template areas. Now I can come in here if I were to use the same name, so we'll use Fred again, use Fred again for the third one. If you look at my page, you can see that the first three elements are all stacked up right here. So one, two, and three are all stacked on top of one another. And my grid's getting smaller and smaller because it doesn't need all the spaces to fill this in. I don't want to do that. I do want to have them in their appropriate places. So I can come down here and keep adding grid area D, E, and so on. Let's see if I can save a little bit of time. Here, I'll pause and finish this. Grid area everywhere, and I'm going back through and I'm adding the letters L, K, J. Now, you can see that L, K, and J, they're here. The first three were right, but everything else is stacked up in this position didn't matter that I defined the three rows and the columns, it's these letters are now determining where they're going to show up. Now my grid template columns does tell me that there's four columns. Grid template rows does tell me that there are three rows. But within that structure, within that grid of 12 squares or 12 rectangles, these letters determine where things go. So if I was to say F for this one, that's where it goes. If I say G for this one, if I say E for that one, you can see I can start playing around with these. So I'll put that one I. What's left here? We've got uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H is missing. There we go. So I've got, yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I can completely rearrange these things based on what letters I assign them. Now I can do it the other way as well. I can change these letters around. So if I make these all back into the sequence letters, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. There we are. Change that back to A. There we go. I've got back to my grid. They're all positioned in the correct sequence. But up here, I can start playing around. I can switch F and G. Like that. Now, 6 and 7 have been swapped. We can change these dimensions to change how big these are. If I made that middle one 12 REM, you can see I can make it much bigger. If I make the first one 15, I can make it much larger. We can change the size of these instead of it being four equal fractions. There we are. So now you can see this one is twice as big as any of the other three. Or if I made that a three, now this one's taking up half of the width. So I've got a total of six fractions here. So three sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth. Now I've changed the size of all these columns. But this still lets me rearrange things. So I can go backwards for the first columns. D, C, B, A. 
There we are. So the first one goes in this direction now, and then five, six, seven, eight, and then back the other way. So you can play around with these template areas to rearrange any of the elements on your page. Doesn't matter what you call them, as long as this name right here matches up with the names that you used for these grid area properties. And that's it. So I just wanted to show you, you could very quickly and easily rearrange things if you're using these name template areas. Hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.